protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, February 20th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, new Snowden documents reveal cell phone back doors. Then, healthcare.gov sickly tax forms. And the feds list government skeptics as a top terror threat. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. The foreign bankers have given us unlimited power, and we're gonna rule you. This is our country. Ah, you're here, we're gonna feed on your ass. Former Mayor Rudy Giuliani has been catching a lot of flack this week for some comments he made about the president. He said that he doesn't really believe that the president loves America. And I mean, come on, let's get real. The president basically said, I love you, girl. I love you so much that I want to fundamentally change everything about you. It's very important for us to align ourselves with the 99.9% .9 of Muslims who are looking for the same thing we're looking for. Order, peace, prosperity. Uh, and so, you know, I, I don't... Uh, quibble with labels. What I'm saying is that in his, in his rhetoric, I very rarely hear him say the things that I used to hear Ronald Reagan say, the things I used to hear Bill Clinton say about how much he loves America. I do hear him criticize America much more often than other American presidents. And when it's not in the context of an overwhelming number of statements about the exceptionalism of America, it sounds like he's more of a critic than he is a supporter. That was the profile that I published in the New Yorker. Somebody frustrated and disappointed. And that's what's frustrating to me sometimes about Obama is that the world seems to disappoint him. At times we too have failed to live up to our ideals. That America has plenty of problems within its own borders. This is true. In a summer marked by instability in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, I know the world also took notice of the small American city of Ferguson, Missouri, where a young man was killed and a community was divided. So yes, we have our own racial and ethnic tensions. Uh, I've got a pen and, and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. You should reject these voices. I think you all know that I've always felt the nine most terrifying words in the English language are I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Help them build their economy so they can have job opportunities for these people. You're right, there is no easy solution in the long term to preventing and combating violent extremism. But if we can help countries work at the root causes of this, what makes these 17 year old kids pick up an AK-47 instead of try to start a business? And of course, one of the ways that Obama is fundamentally changing America is via executive amnesty. That report has some shocking revelations about just exactly who the president wants to bring into the country. And of course, these are going to be people that are bringing the threat of terror, not just to our borders, but actually within the nation as well. Now, despite the fact that a majority of Americans consider ISIS to be the number one threat to America, uh, the DHS is still fretting about anti-government groups. We became aware that these two individuals were extremists in their beliefs and we're actively plotting to kidnap and kill at least one Southern Nevada police officer. Important to mention here, the FBI lists members of this anti-government movement among the nation's top domestic terror threats. Police say the two found a vacant house. They rigged it 
with bolts drilled into wall supports, creating a makeshift jail where they plan to hold captive officers, try them in a court of their own laws, and then kill them. So as you can see, they're basing this whole propaganda campaign on a couple of probably meth heads who, I mean, who equips their house with booby trap nails in the walls? I mean, these people aren't just paranoid about the government. They're probably concerned about anybody coming near them. But they're going to base their whole entire report that the biggest threat facing the country are these really obscene anti-government people. And these people, of course, are not tied to a huge terrorist network. But that does not matter. The Department of Homeland Security circulated their intelligence assessment earlier this month. It focuses on right-wing sovereign citizens and other domestic extremists. DHS completely dismissed the intelligence that was obtained by Judicial Watch that ISIS militants were stationed in Juarez, could be planning attacks inside the United States. ISIS militants are openly bragging about the fact that they have sleeper cells within the country waiting to conduct devastating attacks on U.S. soil. Of course, they've made threats to the military and family members of the military. Uh, the FBI's most recent national terror threat assessment completely omits Islamic terrorists, and instead they focus on sovereign citizens and the militia movement. So obviously this is a lot less about combating extremists and more so about demonizing those with an opposing ideological view. Uh, the true threats by ISIS are continually being sidelined. Now, despite this domestic threat being the biggest concern for the federal government, they don't even invite the chief member of the FBI to this latest extremist summit. The White House did not invite the most senior American official charged with preventing terrorist attacks, the FBI director, James Comey, to the three-day conference that was held this week on countering violent extremism in the United States and abroad. The administration says it didn't want the event to be focused on law enforcement issues. This was according to senior American officials. Now, the New York Times points out how Mr. Comey's Russian counterpart is in attendance, and this was a department that allegedly withheld information that could have prevented the Boston bombings. So, I mean, he's there. He's got a seat there at this summit. And uh, stopping terrorist attacks has been the FBI's highest priority since 9-11, overseeing joint terrorism task forces in every major American city. They bring together federal, state, and local authorities to investigate terrorism. But he wasn't, you know, important enough. He didn't really need to know what was going on here at this terror summit and how to avoid terror attacks within the United States. And obviously, with this latest report, they're thinking that domestic terrorism is the greatest threat. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense unless, you know, you're trying to leave the country open to vulnerability. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139